All right, so at the moment we've got a number of good things going on. Our enemy is patrolling. He'll chase us if we get too close. He does deal damage when we hit him, but you'll notice this is pretty unconvincing looking. What we really need here is some sort of a reaction when we hit. We need a knockback effect. <laughs> So to create a knockback effect, we're going to first of all head right into our player movement script. And we're going to go right to the top and declare a couple of variables. So I'm going to create some space here. And I'm going to first of all make a public float. And we're going to call this one knockback force. This will control how hard our player is knocked back. We'll create another public float. And we're going to call this one knockback counter, which will keep track of how long the knockback effect is lasting. And finally, a public float called knockback total time, which keeps track of how long the effect will last altogether. Finally, we're going to make a public boolean, and we're going to call this one knock from right. And this will just keep track of the direction from which we've been hit. You can then head down into your fixed update where you've got your player movement line. And what we want to do here is just briefly disable movement once we've been hit. So I'm going to create an if statement. If our knockback counter is less than or equal to zero, so if the knockback is over, then we're allowed to move. So we'll grab that movement line and just copy and paste it inside of there. However, if, so we'll do an else statement here, if our knockback is currently in effect, then we want our player to actually get knocked back. So first of all, if knock from right equals true, so if we've been hit from the right, then we want our player to move. So we'll actually borrow the exact syntax almost of our movement script up above. Player RB dot velocity will equal a new vector two. Except that here our two values, if we've been hit from the right, we want to move to the left. So we're going to do negative knockback force. So the X will actually send us backwards. And we want to go up into the air positively. So we'll do knockback force. We'll then add another if statement. And if knock from right, is equal to false. And then we'll write the exact same line again, except that this time we're going to use a positive knockback force in both directions. Now you'll notice up here there's a little bit of trouble. That's because I forgot to add my second equal sign so that it's checking rather than actually setting that. Now at this point we're almost good to go, except that our counter currently will last forever as it's not counting down. So we also want to make sure that the whole time the counter is not at zero, that it's moving towards zero. So we're going to go knockback counter minus equals time dot delta time, which will make sure that it actually counts down. At this point now, when we go into our game, we can add a couple of values here. First of all, I'm going to give my player a force of five. And first of all, let's try setting a knockback counter at 0.2. And you'll notice that immediately he shot up into the air and forward. Now if you were to get hit from the right, and we'll again add a 0.2, he then gets bounced back to the left. Excellent. What's left at this point is to make sure that we detect a collision in order to initiate this knockback effect. To do that, we're going to head into our monster damage script and go right up to the top where we're going to declare a new public variable called player movement. This is simply going to allow this script to talk to our player movement script, which is where all of the knockback effect happens. We'll then head down into this collision section here where our player is taking damage. And what we want to do is make it so that before our player takes damage, he effect, is affected by the knockback. So the first thing we're going to do here is type in player movement to access the other script. And we're going to make sure that the knockback counter within that one is set to be equal to the player movement dot knockback total time. So this will make sure that our counter gets started each time we hit the enemy. Beneath that now, we're going to add an if statement. And essentially what we want to do here is we want to check to see if the collision object, in this case our player, has a transform.position.x, so is left right value. We want to check and see if it is less than or equal to the transform.position.x of the monster itself. 
If that's true, then that means that our player is on the left and he is being hit from the right, in which case we will tell our player movement script that we want our knock from right value to be set to true. We can then borrow this old piece of code right here, copy it, and paste it down here. And all we're going to do this time is make it so that if our collision object, the player, has a greater transform position than the thing he's being hit by, then knock from right will be set to false. Back in Unity now, we want to take a look at our baby dragon, which has the monster damage script on it. You'll notice that this is on the actual sprite, which is the object that has the large collider. And there's a box here now for player movement. I'm just going to grab my player and drag him in there, and it will automatically detect his movement script. The other thing I want to just do is make sure I have some value set for my knockback. I'm going to try a knockback force of 6 and a total time of 0.2. Now when we test the game, we've got a nice effective knockback effect that seems to be working quite well and also works when we bounce off of the monster's head. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. If so, please take a moment to like this video or to subscribe to the channel for more content.